Welcome to Setting Up Your Season Smart Scheduler in Duet. This calendar looks pretty great, and even though there are a lot of students, they all seem to fit, and it looks like they are scheduled in a time that works for the, both the teacher and the student. That's our goal here with Season Smart Scheduling. A season in this situation is a time period, either a month, a semester, a year, in which you have recurring and consistent lessons that you want to schedule at a time that works for everyone. So how do you create your own smart schedule? You start by organizing your student list. You'll be able to find your student list under students. This is where you have added each one of your individual students with their primary contact and the primary contact's phone number. This is important because the phone number is how you're going to be contacting the studio family by sending them texts and requesting their preferred lesson time. So it's important that you have a phone number associated with each primary contact. You can also prepare for season smart scheduling by noting which of your students is former active waitlist or a lead. The season smart scheduler will schedule active students. So you can go in here and make sure that any students you want included in your season are marked as active and any that are not are marked as former or vice versa. You can move former students or waitlisted students into active students and they'll be included in your list. So how do you set up your season planner? In the left-hand navigation, you're going to go under scheduling and click on season schedule. After watching a brief video, you will see this four step process represented on the top of the dashboard. You're going to fill in the season title, which is basically something like fall 2023 teaching schedule, just something that enables you to know what you are planning. The season start date is the date that you would like these recurring lessons to start, and the season end is the day you would like them to end. So for instance, if I were planning a fall schedule, I might have the season start date be September 1st, and I might have the season end on December 31st. The response deadline is the date on which you would like to have all of your studio families return their lesson time preferences to you. So if today is the first of the month, you may want to give your studio families a week to get back to you and respond to your texts. So you might say the seventh of the month is the date that you would like to have the responses Lesson time confirms indicate the, indicates the date that you commit to finalizing the schedule and getting the lesson times back to the studio families. So if today is the first and the response deadline is the seventh, you might give yourself three or four days to confirm the lesson schedule and send out the final confirmations. So you might set the lesson time confirmed dates to the 10th of the month. Where will you be teaching your students? Right now, the Season Smart Schedule only works when all students are instructed in the same location, but you can choose which location that is based on the location preferences you've set up in your calendar settings. These are some examples that we have here, uh, a winter 2024 teaching schedule. When you feel comfortable with these dates, you'll hit Next. You'll see in the top that you've moved to the second step in the setup. This is basically the opportunity that you have to edit your availability. When do you want to teach during this season? You'll see that the hours are, are predetermined from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Monday through Friday, but you can edit these by hitting the X to get rid of blocks or by hitting the plus sign to add blocks. You'll see here in this example that I have added a second block for Wednesdays. Right now, those blocks are overlapping and it's telling me that. But when I touch the time with my cursor, I can get this drop down that allows me to change the times on each of those blocks. So the final version might look something like this, where I have a block of teaching time on Tuesday, I have two blocks of teaching time on Wednesday that do not overlap, and I have two blocks of teaching time on Thursday that do not overlap, and I've deleted the teaching times for the other days of the week. When you're comfortable with your availability, hit Next. In the third step in the setup process, you will be asked which students you want to include in your smart schedule. Now this screen is going to require some time and attention from you. 
it defaults to include all of your active students in the To Be Smart scheduled section. You'll see that in this case, I have 11 students in this section. This scheduled manually section at the top of the screen means that you have the opportunity to manually input predetermined lesson times for certain students who perhaps want to keep their same lesson time as last season, or perhaps you've already talked to them and just determined a lesson time for them. If you want to schedule students manually, simply hover over their name and this schedule manually link will appear over on the right. If you click on that, you will have the opportunity to input the day and time and lesson duration for that specific student's predetermined lesson time. You'll see here that Wolfgang's time is now moved into the scheduled manually section and he has been moved out of the To Be Smart scheduled section. Now you can note that this time may overlap with an availability block that you previously determined in the Your Availability section of the setup. That's okay. The system is smart enough to know that that time is now blocked out for Wolfgang Mozart and that future students should not be scheduled at that time. You also have the opportunity to remove students from the To Be Smart scheduled section when you hover over their name. And when you remove students, they will be moved down to this others category on the bottom. So they won't disappear altogether. You'll be able to see that you still have other students, but they'll just be taken out of the smart scheduling process. Here's an example of the remove button. Again, you can access this when you hover over their name in the list. You can see that Elvis was moved to the others category. Even though he's active, he is not going to be included in the smart schedule process. Now, if for some reason you've realized the lesson duration is not correct for some of these students and I want to change it, you can click on the name of the student and this drawer will open on the right side where you can actually access this drop down menu and change the amount of time of their lesson duration. You'll see that uh, Dolly Parton now has a 30 minute lesson, whereas previously she had a 60 minute lesson. And we changed that lesson time right here in the Season Smart Scheduler by clicking on her name and opening up that right hand drawer. Now, these three lines to the left of each student's name corresponds to the priority. Now you can see that we have here one through seven is showing as the, the prioritization of these students. Now you may have your own reasons for why you wanna prioritize one student over another. Maybe someone's in high school and their schedule is tight, so you wanna make sure that they're getting their top priority lesson time. Maybe somebody drives from far away and you know that it's gonna be difficult for them to come early in the morning. So you wanna make sure that they get top priority. Basically what this is telling the system is that the higher the priority, the harder the system will work to give that student their top lesson time pick. So you wanna make sure that for whatever reason, you drag and drop your students in this list to a priority order that you're comfortable with. Uh, again, higher priority students will be given higher priority by the algorithm as it's creating your schedule for you. And students with lower priority in this list may get second or third or fourth priority lesson times um, as they indicate them to you. When you're comfortable with your student list, click Next, and you'll have a chance to review all of the text messages that are going to go out to your students and their families. Now you can actually click Text Me a Preview and a preview of that text will be sent to the phone number in your studio profile so that you can actually see an example of what your studio families are going to see when they get the text. It'll actually look like this and you will be able to click on the form and see a fake example of the form with dummy information just like your parents would see the actual form with your information in it. To actually see an example of the lesson time preference form, just click preview. You will see the form that they will get when they, when they click on the text and it will have dummy information in it 
but it will give you an example of how you can click through and actually see the information that your parents will see as they choose their lesson times. For example, they will be asked to fill in their preferred lesson times. Now, the form will default to the availability that you previously indicated in the setup process. So your parents will not be able to choose any lesson times that you have not already designated as a time that you're teaching. So they will go through the same process of setting the times that are available for their students to have a lesson. And they will also be able to drag and drop the times into an order, a prioritized order. So in this case, this parent is saying that Tuesday from four to eight is the block that works best for their family for them to have their lessons with you. When you are ready and you feel comfortable with all the previews, you can text the form. Now this is a big moment. This is when your setup is complete and the system will send out those texts to all of your studio families. And the studio families will have an opportunity to access the form and submit their lesson times. We'll do a little cheer right here while season smart scheduling is underway. Your lesson time preference forms were sent and you can see that the dashboard actually changes now so that it looks a little bit different. All you need to do now is wait for your studio families to respond. You have given them several days to get back to you. Maybe it's two days, three days, seven days, and the system will continue to alert you through emails that your system has been updated. When you come back to your season scheduler during that time, it might look something like this. You'll see up at the top here that four of your five students have already responded to you, which is great. That means they filled out the form and they've submitted their lesson time preferences. You can also see that you still have four days till the deadline. So this last person, Harry Belafonte, who's a little bit slow here, still has time to get their preferences back to you. In the meantime, if somebody tells you, hey, we didn't receive the text message, or if they're, it's getting close to the deadline and you're worried about them not having received the text, you can hover over the student's name and resend the text. You can also schedule them manually at this point as well. So perhaps you've talked to Harry, Harry Belafonte's mom in the meantime, and you've agreed on a lesson time. You can still schedule Harry manually and move him out of the smart scheduling lineup. You do that again by clicking on Schedule Manually and entering the time for his lesson. And you can see now that the Scheduled Manually students are up at the top, while those who have responded to the form are down on the bottom. Eventually, your list should look like this with everybody responded. That means that the system has collected lesson time preferences from everybody in the system. It has also noticed that some students have siblings and that they should be put back to back with their siblings. It's also collected any notes that the parents have sent you. You can see that during this time, you can click over to calendar in the top. Now the, this calendar at this time is just representing the times that you have said that you are available to teach. That's the light blue. So this is the, these are the times that you've said in your setup, yes, I am willing to teach during these times during the week. The pink lessons are the scheduled manually lessons. So these are the lessons that you've put in the calendar manually that you don't want to have smart scheduled. You will be receiving emails along the way that will alert you to the status of your responses. They'll, the emails will look like this and they will give you a chance to review your responses in real time. The last step is to adjust the draft schedule. When your deadline arrives and all of your students have responded to you, your schedule will be created. You can see here that the dashboard now reflects that eight and a quarter hours have been scheduled to your calendar. At this point, you can click over to calendar to see how these lessons have actually been scheduled. Now this is a pretty open example, but you can see that the purple or the lavender examples are the smart scheduled lessons. So that means that lessons have been added to your availability that work for both you and for the student. Now if you hover over any one of these lavender lessons, you will see the other times that students have indicated work for them. 
And you can drag lessons around and consolidate them to other times that work for your students very easily. Now, you might do this by mistake, and you might say, you know what, I wanted to try Nanorel Mozart over here on Thursday, but actually that doesn't work as well for me. So I want to go back to what the smart schedule provided for me. You would simply touch this little round arrow in the top right, uh, just the button just to the left of confirm schedule, and it would take you back to the previous schedule that was run. You can rerun the smart schedule. So you can do this as many times as you'd like. Play around with the schedule and then move it back if it doesn't work for you. When you've got the schedule to a place where you feel comfortable with it and you are approaching the deadline to, by which you said you were going to respond to your students, you hit confirm schedule. When you're ready to do this and confirm and send the lesson times, the system will send out the lesson time confirmations to all of your students. This is what the text might look like with your phone number here at the end that's associated with your studio. When you've confirmed the lesson times, all of your new lessons will automatically appear in your active calendar. So starting on September 1st, your fall teaching calendar will automatically be scheduled and appear in your teaching calendar. It may look like this, it may look different for you, but the process is the same. You have collected all of the information from your students of lesson times that work for them. You've inputted your own availability and our algorithm has paired them together so that it makes a calendar. And our algorithm has paired them together to create a teaching schedule that works for everyone. If you have any questions, you're welcome to reach out to us at support at duetpartner.com. We urge you to give Season Smart Scheduling a try, and we're confident that you'll find that what previously took you hours now takes you much less time with this magical system.